The last person responsible for all of this dies tonight. If we make it out of here, you think you're ready? I was made for this. The current era of superhero games and viral pandemics, I thought I'd take a look back at one of the best games of my childhood. Prototype. Playing Prototype in 2022 is like praying to some eldritch god and getting a reply from Kermit the Frog. Meaning, it's confusing. <laughs> Originally, the game won't even launch past the first loading screen. Turns out, this is because the game gets confused if you have more than four CPU cores and dies a death. How do I fix this? Task manager, right click this, click this, uncheck everything except these. Now the game will launch, but it plays at about 18 FPS. This is fixed by running this script here, which turns off all your peripherals for 15 seconds before re-enabling them after the game is launched. Why does this work? I have no idea! Toss in a few graphics mod from Nexus, tweak the settings files for 1080p, and boom, we have a fully functioning and still quite good looking game. So is it as good as I remember? <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Tank! <laughs> Absolutely, it is. You play as Alex Mercer, and the vast majority of the game is played as one long flashback. After a short tutorial demonstrating the seven shades of slaughter, you'll eventually unlock, culminating in an explosion of angst so awesome that it made every wound up teen worldwide simultaneously implode. You find yourself standing on a rooftop, chatting away with a soldier about just how angsty you really are. The last person responsible for all of this dies tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cut to black. 18 days earlier and Alex wakes up in a morgue currently being autopsied. Leaving the hospital, some black watch soldiers shoot at Alex, but he discovers that with the power of Jesus and angst, he's invulnerable to bullets. Jumps over a 20 foot wall, gets chased by a helicopter, throws a damn taxi at the helicopter. Never forget your safety taxi. Blows up two more choppers, bish bash bosh, and next thing you know, you're eating someone. <laughs> Kiss your mother with that mouth. Roger, 2215 Christopher Street, apartment 15A, got it. Saddle up, you got a CP, move it. And that's where most of your story will come from in this game. By eating key figures in the military and science divisions, Alex can view their memories and piece together what on earth is happening. Not that I can understand anything that's currently going on in this smorgasbord of epilepsy and just brain trauma, but hey, it's nice enough to tell you what he learned after the fact, so... Thanks, Alex. Next, you stealthily make your way to your sister's apartment disguised as a soldier. <laughs> and after sneaking into the apartment... What were you doing? Smooth. You rescue your sister from one of the soldiers, stash away in a $6,000 per, per month one-room apartment in the heart of New York City. God, I hate house prices, dude. No. I'm trying to move house right now. Can you tell? I don't like it. She tells you to investigate your own apartment for clues, which is totally an amazing idea, considering... It already surrounded his sister's apartment by now! So how would they not be watching his apartment, you dumb bitch? And that wraps up episode one. Did I mention there are 10 episodes? This game's friggin' phenomenal. How the hell are they remaking The Last of Us again? This game hasn't even been remastered once. It's a crime, I say. A crime! Episode two plays much the same as episode one. Up until the final section, where Alex infiltrates a science facility called Gentech, looking for clues and encounters his sexy mommy, Elizabeth Green. Time for Yeah, that confused me the first time I saw it too. Explains a lot about uh, how Mama I turned out. Yeah. Anyway, she's run off. Her tier three Twitch subs is showing up to bully you, and you just so have that point cure for simpage. If she breathes, she's a fuck. She's got some sort of wild fucking animal loose on the street. Speaking of thoughts, episode three starts with Dana telling us to go find our old flame, Karen Parker. Quick snack later, we're rolling up to pick up our date in a brand new set of fancy wheels. Turns out, I'm Karen something is something of a scientist, scientist herself. Myself. And she wants us to go perform some minor terrorism acts in order to collect genetic materials. And boom! 
Episode 3 complete. Pun intended. Dana gives us an interesting nugget of information regarding Blackwatch's movements. Turns out they brought themselves a big old boatload of troops and supplies, all in the name of rescuing someone called Raymond McMullen, a key scientist linked to old Lizzie here. Naturally, we gotta get to him first. Unfortunately, before we get to have a snack called McMullen, Blackwatch deploys their top secret network of perv drones, specifically designed to peek on Dana naked in his shower. We know Zeus has been spotted multiple times in this area, and we're breaking out some new tech to pin him down. This unmanned aerial vehicle can detect the virus at less than 10 parts per million in open air. With it, we should be able to box Zeus in and destroy him. I gotta take them out before they find Dana. We don't like that. <laughs> well, on a rampage, we get a brief glimpse into the mind of Blackwatch themselves. Their master plan to beat the super weapon come human lawnmower Alex Mercer? That's right! Getting close enough to inject him with a tiny needle? There's no way that'll happen, right? Mercer isn't a he. It's an it. Anyway, our precious dame Dana has come up with a genius idea while we were busy. Get into one of those areas and draw McMullen in. McMullen is the key to all of this. Bing, bang, bong. Viral detectors disabled and McMullen is on our way to our brilliantly laid trip. For no goddamn reason or rhyme, not only does McMullen order a retreat, he somehow accurately guesses that this random R soldier is Alex and orders everyone to kill him. If he'd been wrong, that would have been an incredibly awkward letter to write to a poor widow, wouldn't it? Dearest newly widowed ex-wife of our brave fallen soldier, we regret to inform you of your previous husband, now Swiss cheese cosplayer's recent death at the hands of some extremely unfriendly fire. You see, McMullen, chief scientist of our Black Watch Agency, had a hunch that your wriggling mass of lead and red was in fact a super weapon of untold power and potential that looked nothing like him, and thus ordered 100 soldiers in near vicinity to unleash hell upon him in the most American way possible. I wish I could say he died a hero, but he cried like a little bitch. Respectfully, Black Watch. Regardless, Alex retreats, goes to have a chat with Karen, who gives him the exceptional idea of gathering more viral data from inside a hive. Before Alex leaves, she says this. For what it's worth, I'm sorry it had to play out like this. Definitely not suspicious, love. But like a good little boy, Alex goes off and does as he's told and enters the hive, only to be confronted by Captain Cross. Mercer, you're a hard man to find. I've been looking forward to this. And finally, we get to the worst part of this entire game. The boss fights. And yes, that's fights as in plural. They all suck. It's no hyperbole to say that the boss fights in this game start off bad and progressively get worse and worse and worse. Thankfully, this being the first boss fight in the game, it's not too bad. With some quick thinking, quick thinking, thinking. I think we'll go Space Marine! And with some quick thinking, we beat the bejesus out of the captain and stand victorious over a defeated enemy, King of the World. Well, I can tell you all you need to know about Penn Station. In a way, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, no, we're, we're halfway through the game. Uh, I, according to the laws of stories, it's time for our tribulation arc. Old Capitan disables Alex long enough for some cutting words to inject him with a super cancer. Thus restrained, Alex begins a hasty retreat back to Dana's apartment to begin episode 5. In order to combat the super cancer that's currently eating the regular cancer in his body, Dana suggests that we go have a chat with a scientist called Bradley Ragland. And let me tell you, Ragland is absolutely the best man. Love you, Raggy Baby. <laughs> Raglan's more than happy to help, but in order to do so, he needs to find out where patient zero of the epidemic is. Thus, we head out to consume more pathetic meat bags. Get on the horn and tell them we've secured the Penn Station bodies. I'm taking the heavy armor to destroy a hive. Get control points up in this area, then rendezvous with us at Gentech. You can really feel my humanity slipping away more and more as I play this game. Like, is this a living, breathing human? Or just a slab of meat waiting to be um, 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 um. All moral quandaries aside, it's time to escort Raggy Baby to the bodies of the first infected. After defending him from some big, mean infected machines, we start to make our escape, only to discover the devious infection has come up with a new way to make my life miserable. That's not good. These things can't go fuck themselves. Escaping by the skin of our teeth. Raglan sends Alex packing with a pat on the bum and a vague promise, and we're unleashed onto the city to vent our frustrations for a few hours while daddy works. And 
Five seconds later, when I walk into the next yellow circle, Franklin has a cure. Only caveat, it has to be injected into a suitable hunter. Only way to find them. Piloting a gray goose is a tough job. Swinging a 25,000 pound heli down to safe touchdown on 7th Avenue, now that is another thing altogether. Lucky I'm just that damn good. That's right, baby, it's chopper time. Honestly, choppers completely trivialize most of this game. Need to take down a high fast, chopper from orbit. Need to get from A to B fast and in disguise, chopper. Need to go chopper. But before we can get to all that, first Alex has to successfully track down, inject and consume the hunter. And guess what? Turns out when you cure a super cancer with a super, super cancer, you become infinitely more metal and badass. God, I love this fucking game. Obviously, there's no way this can go wrong now, right? I mean, you have these super cool badass powers, zero weaknesses. What can anyone possibly do to hurt? <laughs> Oh, God damn it. Yep, so we're playing Super Mario out here. Except I don't even get to eat any cake at the rescue because she's my sister and that would be weird. Bong. And so, after a brief chase scene, the military does what the military does best and screws everything up for us, letting the hunter get away with our sister. So we turn to the only man we can. If you can find and consume a leader, it may give you indications where the focus of the virus is. Raggy baby to the rescue. Mwah! You've earned this. However, turns out big pappy hunters are immune to consumption. As such, our only option is naturally beat the absolute piss out of it. So Raggy Baby Booby Boo, what? <laughs> Raggy Baby, did I really rate that? So Daddy Raggy B <laughs> Daddy Raggy Bubby Boo, so Daddy Raggy Bubby Boo can do his mystical science magic. You need to weaken it first. It has two brains and two spinal columns. Break both backs, and it enters a recovery state. During this time, it's vulnerable to consumption. All right, just gotta go curb stomp the hunter real quick and this fight is agony. And it really shows how the exponential pain in my ass graph is gonna go for the next few boss fights. This guy hits hard, stun locks you, and is bloody relentless. Your only option is to take the shots you can and run around healing for a while. Annoying, but at least it's doable. One quick stack later, and Alex granted the gift of 2020 vision. It lets him see the infected soldiers among us. No! Burn! Dead! Good news, having eaten the sussy soldiers, Alex now knows where the leader hunter is. Bad news, eating that hunter reveals the data's being kept in a super strong hive that isn't helicopterable, you bastard! How can they do this to my baby? Luckily for us, Blackwatch's response to explosions not working is to make even bigger explosions. Unluckily for us, it's another goddamn escort mission. Honestly, it's a relief when the Hydra finally shows up and whacks the soldiers in the super tank so we can finally take control and tap boom! Escort missions do not belong in my amazing open world murder simulator! On an alternate note, uh, I don't know where I got this Minions case from. If anybody is looking for their copy of Minions, I have it right- Charging into the nearly cracked hive, Alex once more runs into Elizabeth. However, this time he has a new secret weapon. Honestly, as far as the boss fights go, this one isn't the worst by far. It's just tedious. Smack the big bad, run away from the big bad, eat some soldiers and infected, rinse and repeat. Considering that this is the formula for every boss fight, the main good point of this one is it really isn't that long. Regardless, after the Supreme Hunter demonstrates his ability in Devastator technology, we pummel the hell out of it and rescue Dana who is somehow uninfected? All right, don't question it. Unfortunately, Alex on his way out of the hive clumsily stepped in a puddle, which just so happened to make the screen hunter regenerate. Oh, God 
Damn it! To be dealt with later, I guess. Anyway, now that hot sister lady is safe, it's time for us to head to the nearest phone booth to pick up a hidden mobile phone and have a pleasant chat with the gentleman on the other side. You're not human. Huh. You're the black light virus. Nothing like some casual existentialism on a Monday morning. Are we... Nothing but a collection of sparking neurons encased in a wet skull? How do I know who you are? How do I know who I am? Oh god! We're all virus! Alex heads to a local Blackwatch debrief to find out the truth of the matter, as trusting strange men on random mobile phones is not the best idea for a long and fruitful life. Unfortunately, it turns out that Blackwatch has just perfected their new Fuck Your Stealth Mechanics brand of cologne, and it smells so bad that Alex accidentally reveals himself to all the soldiers. Normally this wouldn't be much of a problem, but... I mean, these guys honestly aren't that threatening, but hell, if I was hacking up along, I'm pretty sure I'd be pretty damn vulnerable too. Reaching out to our friendly neighborhood scammer. Before I can begin, I need to verify your details. What the fuck? He informs us that Blackwatch has decided to deploy these blowers all over the city in an attempt to ruin the video game for us. So we do what we do best. These things freaking suck, by the way. The second you enter the radius, your health starts ticking down fast. And it's pretty rough trying to target them to destroy them when there's a hundred other meatbags running around begging to be juiced up. Turns out, because they've been covering the surface in the antivirus juice, the infected have gone underground. Not metaphorically, literally. And that means Blackwatch has got to flush them out. Which we are going to help them with, obviously. Escort the blood tox pumper through the infected ridden sea, blow up a crap ton of hydras, protect it while it blasts nasty cologne underground, and blah, we force the infected to the surface. Oh god, we forced back into the surface. Elizabeth is back, and she is transformed into a very physically named Mother Behemoth. Thing, because when the first time I saw her, I cried for my mommy. This is in no uncertain terms the second worst boss fight in this game. For some unknown reason, Elizabeth takes next to zero damage from Devastator attacks in this farm. And weirdly, most attacks I've tried against her were almost completely ineffective. All attacks except our legendary tentacle boy. Normally this wouldn't be terrible by itself, but for some ungodly reason, some fuckhead developer out there thought it would be absolutely hilarious to give old Lizzie here a one hit kill, massive area of effect attack. This goes beyond obnoxious and casually coasts its way into purely sadistic territory. I mean, goddamn, at least give it a bit more of a charge up, but no. If you're in the middle of an attack and you see her do this little breathing, Kiss your fat virus ass goodbye. Add on to this the game's annoying tendency to teleport enemies to your position every time you go off to heal. This boss fight is one of the only places in the entire game where I died multiple times to completely BS mechanics. It's so bad. I didn't even remember this fight from when I originally played the game. It's like I lobotomized it out of my head to make the game better. If I can edit my memories like that, am I even real? After a long and arduous fight with mother, we eat the shit out of her. And thus end the threat of Lizzie permanently. This is not, as you'd expect, the end of the game. Oh no! Still one more boss fight left to suffer through. Before we get to that though, wrapping up episode eight, Alex and his contact contrive a plan to get access, finally, to McMullen. You remember McMullen? The guy with the almost preternatural sense of one random soldier actually being a virus because we looked at him? Yeah, that guy, we gotta eat him. And to do so, we gotta make him think we're vulnerable. Oh? By blowing ourselves up, of course! Target the tank. Big dumb meat brain soldier scans us, things were neutralized, and we're sent via Amazon Prime to McMullen's lab post haste. And at last, Alex gets to confront McMullen. This is where the penny drops. Alex, the real Alex, not virus with Alex memories, used to work for McMullen to try and secretly uncover the truth behind Hope Idaho, the original outbreak, and apparently annoyed the hell out of him, constantly getting in the way of the work. When Blackwatch was called in to clean up the science facility by mass exterminating all these scientists involved in a scotch and burn operation, Alex stole a vial of the virus and threw it at the floor just before he was shot. Yeah, this entire outbreak was purely Alex's fault. Talk about a shitty workday, huh? Still, this reveals only a small fraction of the information contained within that juicy brain of McMullen's. So quick snack later. Oh, come on! It's just spiteful! 
Delicious meal denied. We at last are confronted by our mysterious contact, who turns out was Captain Cross all along. What a homie! Every cutscene where Alex has been espousing his manifesto and expounding upon how angsty he is, Cross was the fella sitting and listening quietly like a good plot delivery device. Gotta love good old Capitan Cross. Speaking of best friends, Cross reveals to us that Randall, the general of the whole situation, has decided that things have gone beyond FUBAR and plans to deal with the situation in the most American way possible. And the only way to stop it, eat a VIP extract called Taggart, evacuate in his place in order to infiltrate the warship holding the nuclear devices. And evacuate in his place. Why have I put a comma there? And evacuate in his place in order to infiltrate the warship holding the nuclear devices. Quick break here. Why does Alex care so much if the city is nuked? This is something that's bothered me for years. I mean, we spent this entire game single-handedly reducing the population of innocent civilians in this city by at least 50%. And Alex himself could quite easily Mario hop his ass over the river. And he has fully accepted the fact he's not a human anymore. So why the need to save the city? Love you, Raggy Baby. <laughs> oh, wait. Raggy Baby's still in the city. Oh, you motherfuckers are gonna die before you blow up my Raggy Baby. Let's do this! Unfortunately for our newly found enthusiasm, Taggart has made absolutely every effort to make this the most obnoxious consumption of our entire existence. The idea is that every time Taggart stops along his route to his extract point, I'm meant to jump down and destroy all the defenses in the area. Easy in theory, in practice. <laughs> Suffering through hell for uncountable minutes, we finally get Taggart in a situation where trying to open his tank doesn't immediately spawn Satan's arsehole's worth of explosives around our head, and we hop in to consume his ass to secure our boarding pass onto the battleship. Taggart and Captain Cross board the Reagan together to at last come face to face with a cause of Hope Idaho and a creation of this viral pain in my ass, General Peter Randall, who proceeds to immediately shoot me in the head. Welcome home. Operation Red Light is over. What about our men? The ones on the ground in Manhattan? You didn't think I was that naive, did you? When you have a festering wound, you cauterize it. We'll be saving millions of American lives. I won't let you erase New York like you erased hope. What? We're six minutes out, and only I know the code. Um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 nom. And that's the game! Everything is resolved happily, Alex can use his memories to disable the nuke, and... Uh, Cross? You okay, buddy? And they think the infection is cleansed. They won't be looking for me. And when I consume you... I'll be able to withstand even this. Betrayal! Confusion! What? This is the most confusing twist in the entire game. Why on earth is Cross a supreme hunter? When did this happen? What happened to the real Cross? What? I literally saw you be born and it happened after I met Cross! I don't understand what is happening right now! Well, at least this will be an easy boss fight, right? I mean, we fought this guy before and he wasn't too much of a pain in the ass. Once again, I ask, what goddamn developer in his right goddamn mind decided that if you get hit by a single frame of this goddamn devastator attack, you should be perma stunned and take damage over time for the entire duration of the goddamn devastator? It's a one hit KO, even through the you're low in HP, he's an emergency boost upgrade. It's damn near impossible to dodge at close range and impossible to get out of if it even brushes your pubic hair. It's completely bullshit, and I'm unreasonably angry about this! The only saving grace of this boss fight that made me not want to rip out my few remaining hair follicles was the fact that, glory be to the lords above, Devastators actually work on this guy. So we settle into a rhythm. Eat the humans, blast the hunter with Devastator, try to dodge his Devastator, fail, get killed in one hit, repeat until success. And eventually, succeed we did! <laughs> So 
now we can use the code we got from eating the general and save the city. Easy peasy. Uh, Alex? Alex, why aren't you doing a Batman right now? Alex, you have the code! Just disable the goddamn bomb! Psych. We at Crow, and we live again. And that was Prototype! By far and away my favorite superhero slash anti-hero game of all time. Well, the boss fights might have been complete butt chuff. <laughs> butt chuff? Did I what? Well, the boss fights might have been complete butt chuff. <laughs> While the boss fights might have been complete butt chuff. Overall, the sandbox feel of the game of just running around the city and the freedom to do whatever you want. And the sheer level of destruction you can cause has firmly cemented Prototype as one of my favorite games of all time. The sound design was beefy. Everything feels like it has the right kind of weight to it. And the story was interesting enough to keep me interested the entire game through, even on some sequel playthroughs. I do wish more could have been done with the web of intrigue. This brain map of the story that they introduced at the beginning for slots to be filled from everyone that's consumed. Maybe Alex making his own conjecture or putting together more fragmented memories of himself based on what he finds roaming around the streets. Honestly, it kind of looks like what that was what they were going for in the first place. But as it stands, I never opened the web of intrigue once during my playthrough after its original introduction. On the flip side, the way they handled upgrades and powers were incredible. Nothing really felt underpowered or out of place, and every traversal mechanic enhanced the gameplay without replacing previous powers. Though on that note, the shield power did become pretty outclassed the second we unlocked the armor. That being said, for mowing down countless hapless soldiers, still, by the end of the game, nothing quite beat just picking up a rifle off the ground and going to town. It's incredibly hard to make something as mundane as spitting lead, satisfying as all hell in a power fantasy game like Prototype. Overall, absolutely friggin' fantastic. And although Alex was classic angsty, uh, road to gate me and I'm going to burn it down, archetype, it really fit in with a bleak and apocalyptic scenario we're left in, where he's constantly being betrayed and hounded relentlessly for in his eyes, at the time, no reason. Hell, even when you're trying your best to assist the military with their objectives, the second they realize who you are, regardless of your actions in the game, they turn on you immediately. I'd make anyone bitter and angsty. If I could ask for one thing, it would be for this game to be remade today. Not remastered, a full remake. There is a key difference. Where remaster just levels up the textures and sounds for a new audience, I feel like this game has so much untapped potential in it, which would make for a truly memorable experience if a dedicated game studio knuckled down with today's technology and set out to make a truly awesome experience. Dynamic maps showing how Alex is influencing the spread of the virus or the enforcement of the military. Wandering blobs infected that he dealt with, a more living, breathing world for us to explore. Yeah, if any game is deserving of the remake treatment, it's Prototype. Not The Last of Us for the 70 billionth time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I really enjoyed making it. It's sort of a, a new style for me, hence it's on a new channel. Uh, never really done anything like this before, so let me know what you think. If you prefer more of the review, or if you loved the video game breakdown. Next video, we'll be taking a look at one of my favorite horror games of all time. You know it. You love it. It's the biggest source of nightmares and poorly painted. <laughs> Post icy note. Uh, I actually recorded this back in the second of November. Uh, this voiceover that you're hearing now. I had planned on making this video much, much earlier. I thought maybe it would take me about two weeks, but procrastination, mental health, and physical health, things like that, just kind of made it get pushed back. At that time, I had actually planned to release in two days time an Alien Isolation version of this video because Alien Isolation is one of my favorite horror games of all time. Unfortunately, Mandalore Gaming got there first. So scratch that. Uh, there is going to be no Alien Isolation for me. Maybe I'll wait a year or something. I don't want to like step on the toes of someone who I'm a great fan of. Uh, so I don't actually know what I'm going to do next. Put some suggestions down in the comments down below. Some of the games that you played that were the best of your favoritest of your childhood games. And I'll try and get around to them and live stream them to get the footage on this channel and then edit it together into a video like this. If that is what you want. If not, then by all means, tell me to go fuck myself and to go back to making shitty gameplay videos with IGP. I am okay with doing it either way. I am now like, I've done this without a script. Uh, <clears throat> there's a reason why I don't normally uh, do these without a script. Um, but uh, I guess, you know, now that I, 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 I don't have a script, I should say thank you to the people who made this uh, possible at all in any way to the patrons it's all their fault that you're getting videos like this i felt really bad of having a patreon and not like putting out properly edited content so 
here you go was it worth it patrons reply down below i mean you guys are getting early access to this video and you've seen the entire creative process up to now so if you guys are interested in that sort of thing and exclusive access to a discord where you get to see me rage about my sony vegas crashing constantly uh yeah the patreon link in the description otherwise uh, i might see you on the daily live streams who knows thank you all so much for watching you know i love you you know i hate to leave you and uh yeah I'll, I'll see you for the next video or the next live stream whichever one you would prefer to see me on bye bye oh fucking one month's work jesus